All right. So we're almost there, trying to set to the beginning, setting to reset. So now with this next frame, this is the last one I animated. A lot of it's just kind of understanding your bearings. It's to there. Now it, the, the barn roof, church roof, whatever is closing. So now the next frame, I've moved the atmosphere a little bit. Let's see what else. I need to dim everything. So let's dim that tractor beam quite a bit now. It's barely there anymore. And instead of putting it to zero, I can just take it out. Let's take this one down even a little. And now the roof is almost all the way closed, so that when it resets, it will be all the way closed, like that. And then the glow. Take that down about halfway. That should be all it needs. Make sure it looks significantly different. It looks pretty, it might be a little too much. Let's see. Bring that tractor beam back a little bit. Yeah, there we go. All right, hold down Option, Layer, Merge Visible, select all, copy. You know, there's something I don't like about it, and that's that I didn't move the ice at all. I need to move it just a little bit because it will look weird if it's still all of a sudden. I can deselect, get rid of that frame, and just move the ice, even though it's basically exactly where I want it. Move it a little bit and move this ice maybe just a little bit and this ice just a little bit. Okay. There we go. Option, layer, Merge visible, select all, copy, paste. Okay, now let's try an animation test. Let's save it. Let's make frames from layers. Let's set them all at uh, 0.25. I kind of like that, it's a little bit smoother. Play it through forever. Feature lands, opens up, sucks them in, then it restarts. It just continuously eats these things. It's like a, uh, you know what it's like? I never even made this connection. This is definitely what was in my mind, I'm sure. It's like Ghostbusters. There you go. But once you see it animated, then it works. All right. So once you are happy with your animation, let me show you one other trick. I pretty much animated every panel. Every panel is playing at the exact same timing. That does not need to be the case. Once you're playing it through, you can decide, okay, these things should be faster. This moment should go slower. You know, I want to stay in this frame for a while. Uh, one easy way to set to reset is if I thought I needed some time between when these eagles or these birds come in, right? I can take my last frame, hold down command and select my first frame so that they're both selected at the two ends and then create an in-between transition. So I create that little in-between button, looks like a shooting star. 
and then I decide how many frames I want to add. Let's just be dramatic and let's add 10 frames. Right? And what that will do is it will crossfade them together. So now, oops. So now, um, ah, I messed something up. Let's get rid of one of those. Ah, shouldn't have hit delete. <laughs> okay. So now you see that the layers are fading in on each other. But in order for this to work as a transition, I need to turn the, the furthest back layer on at 100% for all of them. So instead of them one fading out and one fading in, it's just the one on top is fading in. Or in this case, the one on top, which is the later frame, is fading out and slowly revealing my first frame. So, see that? The problem is it won't move my ice and everything because it's just transitioning the opacity. But it might give some breathing room to the animation. All right, so let's do that. And this isn't in your storyboard. Your storyboard just shows the big moments, but now it kind of slows it all down and then starts again. Do you guys think you like that better? It gives it some time. What do you think? You can work with that. Still yeah, absolutely. I want your input. I was really about to ask, like I'm trying to combine my groups together and make it a separate file. All right, I'll come around. So if that is my finish, yeah, I think that's okay. Maybe I'll get rid of some of them. Remember, you can delete frames. I'm going to delete every other one here in this transition. Just move it to the trash. You can always test it and play it. Oh, that was, that was too much. This one I can move to the trash. This one I can move to the trash. All right, so now, once you're happy with your animation, this is how you're going to output the GIF. Right. First of all, you save it as a Photoshop file. The Photoshop file is the file that has all of the different frames in your stage at full resolution, right? Because you can view this 100% and you can see all those colors and all those details in each layer. Okay, so hit Command S, save your final stage. Your final stage is your final animation. And we're going to use this final stage to create our final storyboard. But now you can't put a PSD file up to online, right? And it won't play for you. So we need to go to File. We need to go to huh. Export. <laughs> they change it a little bit with each version. So this is the first time I've done it with the 2018 version of Creative Cloud. You go to Export. And then you have to go to save for web, legacy. Legacy means this is an old type of file, and GIF is surely an old type of file. So you have to do a little searching for it. So it's file, export, save for web, legacy. That brings you to the GIF menu, right? So shrink your GIF using these little um, plus and minuses, just so you can see the whole thing. The problem with the GIF is it saves memory by only saving 256 colors, right? So you want to use the max number of colors. I like to use perceptual in terms of how it selects the colors, but you might change something else, like you might try adaptive, and it will kind of re-render it and choose different colors. 
because they'll look pretty different each way. And then you can try playing it through. So it's going to be a lot grainier, you know, as a web file, but it'll take up a whole lot less memory. Yeah. And then the other thing I like is under quality, I put bicubic smoother. And then that's about it. Basically, you use all the defaults, whatever you think looks best. So perceptual or adaptive. I think I like the perceptual. It gives you a little bit more contrast. Uh, but then the, the blast is so strong. So I'll do adaptive for this one. It just generates different color palettes. Okay, then you hit save, and you're going to save it to the desktop with your name. So I can get rid of stage here, because this is my assignment five. Right? My animation. And then you want to test it, because sometimes the timing in Photoshop is not exactly the time that gets coded into the GIF, because Photoshop has a built-in delay. So how do you test it? Well, I have my GIF file now, GIF at the end. Um, I'm going to open it with a web browser. And I like to use Safari for this, just because I never use Safari for anything. So you just right click it, you open it with a web browser, any web browser should work, and then it will just play it. And you can see how it looks as a GIF file. Yeah, not too bad. Okay. So, once you're happy with your animation, then <laughs> you go to your very last frame in your animation. Yep. Which will turn on your very last layer, right? And then you're going to go to your layer options. And you're going to say flatten frames into layers. Right? This is in case you did any in-frame animating, like I did the transitions at the end where I had multiple frames or multiple layers turned on, had them fade in and out. A lot of you have a lot of different uh, in-frame animation things. right? So you say flatten frames into layers. So then instead of being called layers, you see I have layers one through whatever, through 30. I made 30 different layers on my stage. But my animation is actually 37 frames because I did those in-betweens. So on top of that, I now have frame 1 through 37, which are all 100% opacity, just straightforward frames. Then I'm going to delete everything that's beneath the frames in layers. So from layer 30 on down to the background, I'm going to hit delete. It's not going to affect my animation at all because I outputted those frames from my animation. But at this point, I am also going to select all my frames in my timeline and drag them to the trash. So basically what I just did is I made a Photoshop file that was animated, and I just turned it into a deck of playing cards, where one frame of the animation is now a complete 100% layer. And I've got 37 of them to play with. This is how I'm going to make my final storyboard. So then I'm going to say File, Save As. I'm not going to overwrite my stage. This is my Assignment 5 final storyboard. It's OK. I'll go through it a few times. Now I need to set it up because I've got my playing cards with all the different images from my animation, all 37, but I want to pick the best nine. I want to deal out the best nine that tell my story. So I need a table to do that. So I'm going to go to canvas size, and I'm going to make my width uh, 30 inches. Whatever dimension was eight, you want to make 30. And then I'm going to quadruple the height. So I'm going to do, basically it's 11, so I'm going to quadruple it, make it 44. 
because I need enough space for nine of these frames. 